In the first modules demo, we are going to provision a new Cosmos DB instance. After that, we are going to take a look at containers, partitions, and the time to live value. First, I'm going to provision a new Azure Cosmos DB account. I can easily do so by clicking on the Azure Cosmos DB, or if I don't have it bookmarked, I can click on all services and search for Cosmos and click on Azure Cosmos DB. As you can see, I already have an Azure Cosmos DB account. I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. Let's click on add and go through this wizard. First, I'm going to decide on the subscription. I'm going to put this Azure Cosmos DB instance in and I'm going to create a new resource group. I also have the option to choose an existing resource group. So I'm going to create a new resource group and name it RG Cosmos PS01. Let's click on OK. And for the account name, I am going to choose Reza Cosmos ACC01. For the API, I'm going to go with the core or the SQL API. And as you can see, I have four other options. We are going to look into other Cosmos DB models in the next modules. So let's choose core SQL. I am going to place this Cosmos DB instance in the East US region. So let's select that. For the account type, I can go with the production account or the non-production account. The non-production account allows you to try Cosmos DB for a much cheaper price. However, this type of database is not recommended for production workloads. If I choose the account type production, I can go ahead and enable geo-redundancy and multi-region rights. Let's go ahead and choose non-production. And let's click on networking. On the networking tab, I can adjust the networking security for my Azure Cosmos DB. Right now, the connectivity method is all networks. As the name suggests, any client can connect to the Cosmos DB instance now. I can go and choose a public endpoint or a private endpoint. If I click on public endpoint, I also have the option to allow access from the Azure portal or from my own IP. I am going to choose all networks for the simplicity, but if you are using this instance in production, you should probably go with the public endpoint or the private endpoint. The private endpoint allows you to provision Azure Cosmos DB in a completely private network, so the traffic for the Cosmos DB doesn't go over the public internet. So let's click on all network, click on encryption. Azure Cosmos DB data is automatically encrypted at rest. I can go with the service managed key. This way, the encryption key is managed by Azure, or I can use my own key, which is hosted in the Azure Key Vault. I am going to go with service managed keys, click on tags. It is always recommended to use tags for the simplicity of management. I am going to add an environment tag with the value of dev, click on review plus create. And as you can see, the validation passed. So I'm going to click on create and wait for my Azure Cosmos DB account to get provisioned. Okay, after about 12 minutes, my Azure Cosmos DB account is provisioned. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'm going to click on go to resources and I'm in the dashboard page for my Azure Cosmos DB account. If I click on the overview, I can see the status of this Cosmos DB account is online. I also see the read and write locations, which are both East US. I can also see the URL of my Cosmos DB instance. Before going and creating a container, I wanted to take a moment and talk about Azure Cosmos DB recommendations. This is a relatively new feature offered by the Cosmos DB team. Using this feature, you are going to get automated recommendation about your Azure Cosmos DB account. You can get recommendations for SDK upgrades, suggestions about partitions in collections, query page size, incorrect SDK usages, lazy indexing, and much more. I am going to add a link to this page in the module files in case you want to go ahead and take a deeper look. So how can I get the recommendations for my Cosmos DB instance? This is very easy. In the dashboard page, click on notifications and click on recommendations. My Cosmos DB account is empty now and that's why I don't have any recommendations. So let's go ahead and create a container in here. There are multiple methods you can use to create a container. You can click on overview and click on add container, which is going to redirect you to the data explorer. You could also directly click on data explorer and click on new container. You could also scroll down, click on browse and click on add collection. 
we are going to use the data explorer for now i'm going to click on data explorer and let's click a new container first you need to choose a database so this container will be placed in you can use an existing database or create a new one as you can see i don't have any existing database so i am going to create a new one and let's name it db01 and as you remember a database is the unit of management for azure cosmos db i can go ahead and assign throughputs at the database level if you don't want to assign throughputs at this level simply uncheck provision database throughput let's check it back again here i can go ahead and assign a specific throughput to my database i can say i need 500 request units and as you can see the price is going to update based on the request units i choose please note that if you set the throughput at the database level this throughput can only be divided among maximum number of 25 collections you can also go with the dynamic throughput this is also called autopilot so if i click on auto scale you can specify the maximum number of request units you want to assign to this database and azure cosmos db is going to dynamically adjust the throughput based on the load i don't want to do so so i'm going to click on manual and go with 500 rus next you need to specify the container name so it makes sense to name my container people and for the partition key i am going to go with the city property as you remember the partition can be used to distribute all the documents inside your container among logical partitions so you need to make sure the partition key is chosen wisely let's scroll down and click on ok and let's wait for my container to get created and here we go i have a new database and also a new container created let's go ahead and take a look i am going to expand my database and click on the people container as you can see i can also click on the scale and i have the option to assign different number of request units to my database or go with the auto scale or autopilot let's get back to our collection as you can see if i click on the items there is no document in this collection so i can go ahead and create one let's click on new item and i'm going to replace this placeholder with my first document as you can see the id is a1000 the city is toronto i also put my name and surname there let's click on save and as you can see there are a few auto-generated fields created for me these fields are different among cosmos db models so we are going to see and talk about them in the next modules as well so i'm going to click on new item paste and as you can see this time my partition key is new york city the name is john and the surname is smith and i'm going to update the id to a1001 and let's click on save and looks like i have two items in my database and if i expand this you should be able to see these items the last concept i want to demonstrate here is the time to leave or ttl if i click on the people collection and click on settings i am able to enable or disable time to leave if i turn it on i should be able to add a time to leave value and assign it to this collection let's go ahead and set the time to leave value to 30 seconds and let's save this means if i don't update the documents inside this collection for over 30 seconds the document will be auto deleted let's quickly click on items so as you can see i have two items here i am going to pause and come back after 30 seconds okay over 30 seconds has passed so let's go ahead and refresh the items inside this container and as you can see the items are gone i can simply go ahead click on settings and disable the time to leave if you are setting time to leave you are most probably going to assign a much larger number than 30 seconds for the cleanup time before concluding the demo i would like to go ahead and delete this database let's click on three dots in front of the database and click on delete database confirm by typing the database id and click on ok and as you can see my database is gone i could simply go ahead click on cosmos db choose my cosmos db and delete this account if i don't need it anymore and this concludes our demo thanks very much